Yo, how's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and it's been a little while since I've reviewed a Pokemon Journeys episode. Well, it was another stretch of breaks, well one break, and another recap, but we're finally back. And we're finally at the climax of Pokemon Journeys, Ash vs. Leon. What this series has been building up since early 2020 is finally happening. So how was part one of four episodes? of Ash vs. Leon. Well, before I get into the episode review, I just want to say if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. It'd be pretty awesome if you would do that. So we start off this episode with Go arriving in Slaveport City. He meets up with Gary in Tokyo as they're about to start Project Mew. Yeah, unfortunately it doesn't look like Go's going to even be able to watch Ash face off against Leon, along with Gary, so um, yeah, more on that later. Now in Go's place, we have Koharu and Dawn who have traveled to Galar to cheer on Ash as he faces off against Leon. And Dawn has brought some of her pom-poms, which Pipwuff is uh, donning the cheer cheerleader outfit. And Evie decides to cheer along with Pipwuff, so that was kind of a cute moment. And then to take Go's place, sitting with Hop, we have Sonya joining him as they watch the match between Ash and Leon. Now moving on to the actual battle. Before we start the battle, Leon has a proposition to make. And it is... He wants Ash to use all three of his gimmicks against him, basically coming at him with his full power. Like we didn't see that coming. But the refs agree and they allow it, allowing Ash to use all three of his gimmicks so he has all three of them at his disposal so he can use them at any time he wants. So the battle begins and it's Ash's Pikachu versus Leon's Cinderace. As Pikachu uses Thunderbolt, Cinderace uses Scorching Sands, and because it has the Libro ability, it causes it to become a ground type, so Pikachu's move does no damage on it, whereas Pikachu gets hit directly by the attack, and takes damage as a result, whereas Cinderace takes none. Showing that uh, Leon here, uh, yeah, he's already uh, got one up on Ash, so both Pokemon end up being recalled, with Ash taking out Gengar, and Leon taking out his Inteleon. Now the main highlight here is Inteleon using Aqua Jet, but with a twist. Utilizing Counter Shield that Ash uses with Pikachu, which Dawn actually caught on to as well. Seeing it just once, he ends up copying it for this battle, which I thought was pretty neat. Which Gengar was hiding on the ground, and he basically gets pulled out and is getting whipped around by the Aqua Jet. But he manages to get out and uses Will Wisp to basically knock out this, basically the water streams that were spiraling out and causes it to basically haze up, and that's when Ash Gigantamaxes Gengar. Now I found it kind of neat that Inteleon was utilizing a Dark Pulse like he does a Snipe Shot, and he seemed to be actually causing Gengar to struggle quite a bit, but Gengar manages to get the upper hand, and before basically getting out of his Gigantamax form, he manages to take out Inteleon, and with that, Leon is the one that loses his first Pokemon. So Leon takes out his next Pokemon, which is Mr. Rhyme. And he goes to freeze Gengar and take him out. But he then freezes up. It turns out that Gengar has the Cursed Body ability and it causes him to disable his move. But it doesn't really matter because Mr. Rhyme ends up uh, taking out Gengar anyways. He gets frozen and basically one-shotted here. And as a result, Ash has also lost one Pokemon as well. At least Gengar did get a W here. But anyways, that's pretty much where the episode comes to an end, with both combatants having lost one Pokemon going into episode 2. So before I get onto the pros and cons section, I just want to mention the cameos we got in today's episode. We had Dawn return, we had uh, Gary of course return at the beginning of the episode as he's part of Project Mew. But we had the entirety of the Masters 8 roster. And Cynthia and Diantha happen to be there in person, which I thought was pretty nice. Seems like they're in their own suit, watching the battle from atop. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. <laughs> and then we also have Marnie, Piers, and Alistair reappearing for Gengar's segment, which I liked how Alistair was actually pretty happy when Gengar won and defeated Inteleon. So this tells me that we're probably going to be getting cameos around each Pokemon of Ash's team, since we got a few cameos for Gengar and some of the 
previous uh, opponents he either went up against or had interactions with, being, you know, Marty and Piers, and then Alistair interacting with Gengar when Gengar was trying to, you know, learn how to Gigantamax, get the max soup in order to do that. So I'm guessing when it comes to the other Pokemon, there's going to be other characters that are probably going to return revolving around them. Like, for example, Lucario, maybe Karina, her grandfather, and B make cameos watching the battle from afar. Since Alistair did appear in this episode, I expect B to appear in the next episode or two. Other characters that cameoed within this episode include Raihan, when Leon was introduced, then Ash's Pokemon at Oak's Lab, Professor Oak himself, Delia, and of course Tracy, who have been watching the battle this entire time. I know some people were a little disappointed that characters like May, Max, Misty, Brock, Silent, the Lola gang haven't made cameos yet, or even Serena, Clement, and Bonnie, but I feel like they're going to be making cameos at some point. It would feel kind of awkward if they weren't shown watching this battle, but I feel like we are focusing on characters that have appeared within Journeys and also within the Masters 8 at the moment, and of course, characters like Alistair and Marnie that have a connection with Gengar. So with Ash's other Pokemon, I expect connections. Like I said, Lucario will probably going to see B and Karina cameo again. Maybe Wilkstrom for Surfetch and so on. So I just ask people to be a little patient. You might see some of these characters show up in the next three episodes. we got three episodes to go, so we still have time for plenty of characters to make cameo appearances within this battle. Now overall, I thought this was a pretty good episode. It's a solid start to Ash vs. Leon. Now, obviously, the first half of this episode was leading up to the battle, and then the battle itself. So, it's not like Ash vs. Cynthia, where it basically started off from the beginning. If I had to compare the two, I'd say that I slightly preferred Ash vs. Cynthia's first episode versus Ash vs. Leon, and that's mainly because I think with Ash vs. Cynthia's first episode, there was a lot of tension, especially at the end of the episode, ending in a cliffhanger ending. This ended in a cliffhanger ending, too, but it wasn't as tense because both opponents have lost one Pokemon with Ash taking the W first. So um, n not knocking this battle but I just think that that had a slightly better start. Doesn't mean that this battle is not going to be better by the end. I'm just saying that I think that Ash versus Cynthia had a slightly better start. But moving on from that I will say that I like the fact that Gengar got a W here. He hasn't really done super well in the Masters 8 tournament up to this point. So to see him get a W here, a solid one too, was pretty nice. So hopefully Dragonite ends up getting a W because, uh, yeah, Dragonite hasn't really been doing very well lately. It needs a W and it needs to happen now. It's now or never. Because, uh, yeah, if it doesn't get a W here, it's pretty much last few battles, just jobs. So uh, here's to Dragonite potentially getting a W in the next episode. Now when it comes to the animation, I'm pretty content so far. I'm expecting it to get better with each episode, especially with the last episode being the absolute best. But it was pretty standard. Um, I, it's pretty comparable to Ash vs. Kukui where it kind of started kind of not basic, but it was just decent at the start, but it got better in the latter two episodes. So yeah, let's hope it gets better from here. But the main highlight here was Inteleon obviously using Aqua Jet and combining it with Counter Shield. That looked really cool. And also, I already like the strategies utilized here. Leon definitely was prepping for this battle, like using Counter Shield against Ash. That's already crazy. He's only seen it once. He's already copying it and using it against Ash, which that was really cool. And of course, you know, Gengar using Cursed Body to freeze up uh, Mr. Rhyme here. Although it didn't really work out, it was neat that Ash kind of banked on that, even though there's only a 30% chance of that happening. And of course, Inteleon using Dark Pulse like Snipe Shot. I don't know, I thought that was really cool. It shows that he's also very unpredictable with his battle strategies, so... Yeah, he's constantly evolving and changing with his Pokémon when it comes to his battles. He's definitely prepping and getting his homework on his opponents. He's seen all of Ash's Pokémon fight in Ash vs. Cynthia, so he has an idea of what their strengths and weaknesses are. So I find that to be really neat, so that's why Ash is probably going to be struggling coming up in the next episode. Now I do have a couple nitpicks with this episode. Now first off, 
Leon having Ash utilize all three of his gimmicks. On one hand, it's really cool because we get to see Ash utilize his full strength in battle against Leon, and that's kind of cool. But at the same time, Leon is handicapping himself since he can only use Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing, and it looks like it's only going to be used for Charizard. We already lost the opportunity with Inteleon, so I don't see Cinderace or Rillaboom Gigantamaxing at this point. It's definitely going to be Charizard. So that limits him to one gimmick. So he's already handicapping himself, but it leaves a question. Does Ash even stand a chance against Leon when he's not utilizing all three gimmicks? Like, if he's only using one, could he win with just one gimmick? Because I have a hard time believing that that's the case, just because Gengar Gigantamax and... It kind of got lucky by beating Inteleon, if we're being honest. Without Gigantamaxing, I'm a little uncertain whether Gengar would have won or not. So that's one thing I'm a little um, unsure about. Next, and this one's more of a minor nitpick, but they did reuse the Pikachu vs. Cinderace segment twice within the episode. Once before and after the middle of the episode where they basically go to ad break. I don't know why they decided to do that. I mean, we literally just saw Pikachu and Cinderace have their little skirmish. We didn't have to see it again after the break. I don't know, just kind of silly in my opinion. They could have utilized that for something else, that time for something else, I should say. So, yeah, I'm not really sure why they did that, but whatever. Now, those were nitpicks, and they're not going to hurt the overall score for this episode. But this, this next thing I'm talking about... Is a con within this episode that is actually going to affect the score a little bit. But it's a major con for the end of the series. It's the fact that Go is not present for the climax of the series. He's not here for Ash vs. Leon. Instead, he's sent to off-screen land to do Project Mew. Now granted, we could see a special episode down the road, but there's no guarantee for that. And if this is the case, and then we see Ash and Go reunite after this and Project Mew is over... If it ends up being off-screen, that's like a huge disappointment. I mean, first and foremost, Project Mew, it's different, it's interesting. Like, it hasn't been like the best execution in my opinion, but it's Go's goal. It's different for the series, and I wanted to see it concluded, and concluded on-screen. There's been a lot of build-up for it, and Go growing as a character within it. And to see it sent to off-screen land, that's extremely disappointing. Like, very disappointing. But what's worse, Go has to leave here. He has to be sent to off-screen land while Ash is facing off against Liam. You mean Go, the character that's been with Ash for the entire series that's watched all of his PWC matches. He's not present for the final one? Ash's big moment within this series? Are you kidding me? I mean, it's cool that we get Koharu and Dawn here, but like... Kaharu hasn't been present for any of his previous PWC matches, at least to my knowledge she hasn't. I mean, and it's cool that we got Dawn, but it's like, why can't we get other characters? I mean, I get that Dawn has had a special focus within Journeys for quite a few episodes, but at the same time, I mean, it feels kind of weird that other characters like Brock, Misty, uh, Serena, Clement Bonnie, the Lola gang, other characters aren't present. Or even Iris, who was actually here but left after the quarterfinals. I don't know, but all of this kind of leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And I get that we can't have every single character cameo. At least not, at least in this episode. But, I don't know. I just feel like it's a weird decision to have Dawn and Koharu here. But, like, all other characters that we'd like to see actually be present for Ash vs. Leon for this final battle is not here. I don't know. I shouldn't complain about that too much. I think the main complaint here is that Go is not present. He's the co-protagonist of this series, and he's not here. Like, why? I, like, I don't understand what they were thinking by doing this. I don't know. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Like, we could see Project Mew at a later date. Who knows? But robbing Go's appearance or presence here for the finals for Ash's final match here. I don't know. It just leaves a major bad taste in my mouth. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna end off the review there. So overall, I'd say this is still a pretty good episode despite the fact that Go is not here. That's still a bad thing. I'll probably take a point and a half off for that. 
And then for the other nitpicks I had mentioned previously, probably deduct like a half point for both of them combined. So I still give this episode an 8 out of 10 overall. Still a very solid episode and a solid battle so far. That's probably the main highlight here is that the battle is looking good so far. But anyways, in the comment section down below, I'd like to hear your thoughts. What do you think about this battle so far? What do you think about Go being sent to off-screen land to complete Project Me, potentially? And Dawn and Koharo's appearance here. Is there any characters you wish you would have saw on the stands here? Name the character and put it in the comment section down below and also just post your overall thoughts about this episode and the climax of the series so far. What do you want to see in the next episode? Just post your overall thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And guys, have a great day or night where you're at, and I'll see you all later. Bye.